Hey everyone, this is Anson from AnsonAlex.com and in this video I'm going to provide a tutorial for people who are coming from a PC or a Windows environment and starting to use Mac computers. So I'm going to go over all of the basic things on a Mac computer and I'm going to try and translate what they are if you're coming from that PC environment. At the end of the video I'd really appreciate if you could all add in the comments other things that you're looking for to know how to do on a Mac computer so I can create more videos in the future and tailor them specifically for what you're looking to do. But this should be a basic introduction for everybody. So first of all, this is what your desktop should look like when you first get your Mac computer set up and you just log in right away. I haven't customized anything on this account yet. So the first thing I want to show you is up here at the very top left of the screen. You'll notice that there's this little Apple icon and this is called the Apple menu. And this is where you can access a lot of basic features of your Mac computer. So first of all, know that your system preferences is right here. So if you click on this option right here, there's a number of system preferences and this is equivalent to going to the control panel on your Windows computer. So this is where you can specify things like how long it takes for your computer to go asleep, when you can, where you can add new users to use the computer, where you can specify which internet connection you're going to use, all of that sort of stuff is here in the system preferences, again, equivalent to the control panel in a Windows computer. Now with the system preferences open, to close it, all I need to do is click on the little red dot at the top left. That's equivalent to the X on a Windows computer when you're closing an application or something like that. So to close out this window, I can just hit the red X and it goes away. Now there's a few other things that I want to talk about in this Apple menu. So we talked about system preferences, but this is also where you can put your computer to sleep where you can restart your computer, where you can shut your computer down, or where you can log out of the current account and log into a different account. So just be aware that uh, this Apple menu is very important. You're going to be using it almost every day when you're shutting down your computer, and it's also where you can access your system preferences. Now another thing that I want to show you is up at the very top right of your screen, and it looks like the magnifying glass. This is called Spotlight, and this is where you can search anything on your computer. You can search for files, for folders, literally anything on your computer, even applications. So in a little while here, I'm going to show you how you can access the applications folder, how you can access Finder on Mac, which is equivalent to kind of clicking on the start menu on a Windows computer. But know that if you're looking for something, you can always click on this magnifying glass and search for it. So let's say I wanted to open an application and it's called Safari. We're going to talk about Safari in a few minutes here, but Safari is equivalent to Internet Explorer. It's the native application on Mac that's used to access websites on the internet. It's the internet browser. So you can notice that instead of having to go to my applications folder or on a Windows computer go to start and programs, I can just search for the application that I want to use and I could click on it to open it up here. So when you can't find something on your computer, always remember to go up here to the magnifying glass and search for whatever you're looking for. I'm going to close that out for now. The other thing that I want to talk about next is this toolbar on the very bottom of your screen here. It's kind of like the toolbar that you'd have on a Windows computer. Obviously it looks a little bit different, but by default there are a number of applications that are already on here for you to use. So you'll notice that one of them is Safari. Again, that's the internet browser that we're going to use. And in a few minutes I'll open that up so you can take a look at it. And if you mouse over each of these icons, it'll tell you what they are. So the mail app is the application that you can connect your email accounts to so you can receive your mail on your Mac computer. There's a contacts app, which is like an address book for you to keep phone numbers and addresses. There's a calendar app for you to create events and meetings that you have coming up. There's a notes app where you can add quick little notes. And if you have an iPhone or an iPad, those notes will also be available on those devices so they can sync between the two. We've got maps, a text messaging app. I'm not going to go over every single one of these. I think starting off, the most important one is definitely Safari. But there's another one I want to talk about all the way over here to the right and that is the App Store app. This is the app, and I'm going to click to open it up here, where you can download any applications, any programs that you want to run on your Mac computer. Some of them are free, some of them are paid for. So you can really look through this on your own, but one thing you might want to do is uh, go up here to the category section at the top and click on that, and you can search for apps based on the category that they're in. So one of the first ones that I like to suggest to people who are new to Mac is the productivity category. So if you click in here, there'll be a number of applications and you might have heard of some of them before like Evernote is a really popular note taking app that you could download and use on your Mac computer. You can see like this one here is free, this one here costs five bucks. 
So some are free, some cost money, like I said, but there are a number of great apps in here. And you know that these apps don't have viruses or malware because Apple has approved them to be downloaded right from the Apple App Store. So there's definitely anything in here is safe to download. Again, you can also look at the top charts section. So these are going to be the most popular apps on Mac. You can see the most popular ones that are paid for. And if you scroll down here to the bottom, you can see the most popular free apps. You'll notice that in here we have a couple apps, Keynote, Pages, and Numbers. I'm not going to go into those apps today in this tutorial, but know that these apps are equivalent to Microsoft Office. So Keynote is equivalent to PowerPoint. Pages is equivalent to Microsoft Word, and Numbers is equivalent to Microsoft Excel. You can also use PowerPoint, Word, and Excel on your Mac computer, but Apple does have their own suite of productivity apps for you to use, word processing, and those are the Keynote, Pages, and Numbers apps. So those are in here for you as well. So again, you can look through this app store on your own time. Maybe somebody suggests an app for you to use on your Mac computer. You could go up here to the top right and you could just search for whatever app that they suggest. So definitely keep an eye on that. And again, to close this out, we can just hit the little red button up here at the top, or we could click on the App Store menu and we could quit the App Store. And it'll quit us right out and take us back to our desktop. Now the next thing I want to talk about is called Finder. And you can access Finder by clicking on the little smiley face at the bottom left of your screen. When we, cl when we click on that, a window appears. And Finder is equivalent to Windows Explorer on a Windows computer. It allows us to access all of the files and folders and locations on our computer. Now starting out, you'll notice that I do have a few locations over here on the left. So I could click on Applications. And I'm actually going to make this window a little bigger by going to the bottom right corner and just dragging it out so I can see a little bit more of what's in here. And I can click to drag and move this window around if I want. But these are all of the applications that are installed on your computer. Now there's going to be a few more in here on my computer than what you see on your computer because even though this is a new user account, it still has applications that I've installed in my other accounts. But if you're looking for a specific application, like say the calculator, this is where you can access it from the Applications folder. You'll notice that you also have a Documents folder over here. This is just a folder that Apple has created automatically for you for you to store all of your documents. Now, while we're in Finder, I want to show you how to create a new folder because I'm sure that you have different categories of documents and you might want to organize them a little bit. So creating a new folder on Mac is the same as it is on a Windows computer. You're just going to right click and click on New Folder. When you do that, a folder is created and you can just type to call it whatever you want. So I could just call this Test Folder. Now remember that if at any time during this tutorial you're following along and you need to pause or rewind or fast forward, you can always do that. Um, so if you want to try creating some folders on your own, you can just pause the video and, and create some folders. But there's something that I want to show you here in Finder that I think will help you as you use your computer a little bit. So I'm going to shrink this window a little bit. And I want some more things to be displayed over here on the left because these aren't all of the locations on our computer. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on Finder up here in the top and we're going to click on Preferences. Now from here, we need to select a few options. First of all, go ahead and hit the check mark where it says Hard Disks. And you'll notice that when you do that, this little hard drive icon appears on the top right of your screen. That's like the basic area within your computer. If you access this hard drive area, you'll be at the, the very first part of the hierarchy where all of your computer's folder structure is. It's like going to My Computer on a Windows computer. So it's nice to have that icon there for quick access. The next thing that you should do here in the Finder Preferences is click on Sidebar. You'll notice that it allows us to customize which items are showing up over here in the sidebar of our Finder window. And I think it's important to check mark these other locations here, movies, music, pictures, and then mine says Ants and Alex Com New. That's my username. This is the user account I'm using on this computer. So for you, that will be whatever you named your user account. And so go ahead and hit that check mark as well. And then we'll go ahead and hit the red dot at the top left of the Finder window. Now, from here we have a few more areas over here on the left. Obviously, downloads are where your downloads are automatically going to go when you download something from the internet. So if you download something and you can't find it on your computer, just click on Finder and then click on Downloads and you'll be able to find it there. Movies, music, and pictures are folders for you to store just that, movies, music, and pictures. And then this little house icon, which we just added over here to our sidebar, is called our home folder. And If we click on that, you'll see that this is the basic folder where all of the other folders in my user account are located. So I can access all of my 
desktop, my documents, my downloads, and everything just by clicking on the little home folder here. So this is how you'll navigate through your computer when you're organizing files or when you are <clears throat> trying to find something that you downloaded from the internet. And always remember that if you don't want to go through Finder to find something, to use the Spotlight search up here at the very top. Now there's a couple things I want to show you. Uh, I want to mention these other two buttons up here. We talked about the red button. That closes a window. So I just close that window, and then I can click on Finder to open Finder back up again. You'll notice that if I click on Macintosh hard drive, it opens up a Finder window as well. It just brings me to a different location. It brings me to the very basic location on my computer where I can work from. Now the little yellow icon up here at the top will minimize your current window. So when I click that, you'll notice that window shrinks down here to my toolbar, just like when you minimize something on a Windows computer. And then if I click it on my toolbar, it comes right back up again. This works the same as if you're in Safari, the internet browser, which is equivalent to Internet Explorer, which again we'll look at in a second here. But if you're in Safari and you click the little yellow icon, it's going to shrink that computer to the toolbar. The little green dot doesn't work very well. It resizes your window, uh, but I don't really use that button. Instead, to resize my windows, I just always drag from the corners. You can drag from any corner or side of a window here in Mac. So you can drag these two sides out to make your window a little bit bigger. But just remember that yellow minimizes, and you can see the little line in there, and the red one with the X will close the actual window. Now, I'm going to go in my Documents folder real quick here because I have this test folder I created, and I think one of the things that's important to know when you first start using a computer is how to delete things. So it works very similar to how it does on Windows, and you can delete things in multiple different ways. One of them would just be to click on the folder or file I want to delete and drag it all the way to the bottom to the trash and let go of it. It'll move out of my Documents folder, and you can see that there's now some garbage in my trash. If I click on my trash to open it up, here's my test folder. From here, I could hit Empty to empty the trash, or I could right click on the test folder and click put back and it will take it out of my trash and it will put it back where it came from. Another way to delete a file on Mac is to right click on the file or folder and just click move to trash. If you know that you no longer need anything that's in your trash, you can go to the very bottom right corner, right click on trash and click empty trash. It's going to confirm are you sure you want to empty your trash and you can say sure, empty trash and those items will no longer be in there and they won't take up any more space on your computer. Now let's go ahead and take a look. I'm going to close out this Finder window. Let's open up Safari because a lot of the things that we do on computers nowadays are done all through the internet. So one of the first things you're going to want to do is access the internet on your Mac computer. So we're just going to go down to the toolbar. And we're going to mouse over the Safari icon which looks like the compass and we'll click on it and you'll notice that this new window opens up and this is our internet browser, just like Internet Explorer or Firefox or Google Chrome. You can add Google Chrome and Firefox to your Mac computer as well. You can do so by going to the App Store or you can just go to Google Chrome, just search Google Chrome in Google and you can download it from there. So here we are in Safari. Now in Safari I can both search Google or enter a web address up here at the top. So I could go to AntonAlex.com just by entering my website address and it will take me to my website. And you can go to any website, ESPN, whatever sites that you use. Now at the same time, I could just search Anson Alexander up here. Just type in your search term and click enter and it's going to search Google for Anson Alexander. So if you need to search for something, just enter it right up here in the top bar and you'll be able to search for it. So that's how Safari works, at least the basics of Safari. If you're all interested, I can post a specific tutorial just on using Safari for those of you that have been using Internet Explorer and are a little bit new to Safari. Another thing I'd like to mention before I let you go here is that don't be afraid to play around on your Mac computer. I'm going to quit out of Safari by clicking on Safari and going to quit. But go ahead and go into Finder or go into your hard drive and search through these different folders and, and documents that you already have on your computer try creating new folders, um, try downloading things from the internet, install some applications, navigate through the App Store and see if you can find something useful for you. But I hope this kind of helps at least get you introduced to your computer. You, know how, you now know how to access the internet, you know how to shut down, restart and access your system preferences. Probably a good idea to look through your system preferences as well too. Go to the Apple menu, click on System Preferences and go in each one of these little areas and just read what all of your options are. It's pretty self-explanatory. So, 
You know, you might not know how to do everything on your computer right away, but just by going into these different areas and reading what the options are, you'll get a better sense of what you can and cannot do on your Mac computer. So definitely don't be afraid to go in there as well. Again, if you have any questions, please let me please let me know in the comments section here on YouTube. And if you have any suggestions for future videos regarding Mac, for those of you that are new to the Mac environment coming from the PC Windows environment, let me know what those videos you'd like to see are as well in the comments. And that's pretty much all I have for you for today. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, I would really appreciate a thumbs up here on YouTube. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more technology tips and tutorials. That's all I have for you for today. It's Anson from AnsonAlex.com.